we go on with uh, advanced reaction engineering time dependent operations. We said last time when we met that there are several situations where we have to deal with uh, time dependent operations. Of course, the classic ex example would be a batch reaction where we are concerned with how long it takes for the process to get completed to the level that you and I require. The other situation would be that you know you have a process which you want to start up the continuous process will take some time for it to stabilize. So, start up of a process also is a time dependent operation. A third situation which we also looked at is a case where this process is running and a steady state, but it becomes time dependent because the catalyst uh, tends to deactivate and the deactivation brings in a time dependent element which we must appropriately take into account. So, that the process runs as per our requirements. We did speak about this briefly, but I just want to run through this once again just to emphasize a few issues. So, we are looking at deactivating catalyst. Okay. So, we are looking at deactivating catalyst and uh, what we would like to do is quickly get a view for how we handle deactivating catalyst for which we require some understanding of what we call as deactivation kinetics. How do we get some information on deactivation kinetics? As an example, there are many ways it can be done. Example is let us say we have a catalyst which is uh, sitting on a spinning basket okay, and to which let us say you have material coming in at some and material going out okay, at some. So, it is undergoing some reaction we want to understand what is the uh, kinetics of this deactivation. Okay. So, to, to just to understand this I am just writing the material balance input output then you have generation equal to accumulation. Okay, this is uh, something that you and I have been writing for a very long time. So, it is nothing very new. Suppose I say that this C A by C A naught and uh, if I also say that theta divided by tau d, where tau d is the characteristic time, characteristic time for deactivation. What is meant by characteristic time? We can understand it like this that uh, let us say a catalyst has a life of uh, let us say 1 year, then its characteristic time is 1 year. Okay. So, essentially it is a time which is uh, characteristic of the process and uh, I have taken it as tau d. So, that we try to understand this whole thing with respect to the characteristic time of the process. Okay. Let us see what it gives us. So, let me simplify and write this as it is fairly elementary. So, I will not go through all the steps. So, you can say I am just write this as 1 minus and just simplify this and write this plus R A divided by V divided by V naught C A naught equal to V divided by tau D D psi by D theta times V naught. So, it can be written in this form plus R A times tau r divided by C A 0 equal to tau r divided by tau d d psi by d theta. So, a catalytic uh, reaction in which deactivation is important, uh, this is the kind of uh, material balance which describes what happens during the process of deactivation. Now, if it so happens that tau r is less than tau d or in other words what we are saying is that the reaction time typically for 1 or 2 seconds uh, you know most of these catalysts uh, the reaction times in the equipment is not more than few seconds. Okay. So, if the reaction time is few seconds while the deactivation time or the, uh, the characteristic time of deactivation is of the order of months or years then this tau r by tau d is quite small. So, that we can neglect this or in other words 
when we do experiments on trying to understand deactivation, we might recognize that the right hand side is not uh, important in this because it is 0. Therefore, we can understand the left hand side and then simply look at what happens to psi as a function of time. Okay. Let us just take this forward, this whole idea forward. So, what it means is that 1 minus of psi plus r a by tau r divided by c s 0 equal to 0. This is what is called as quasi steady state approximation. So, that r a as a function of time is 1 minus of psi as a function of time divided by multiplied by c a 0 divided by tau r. In other words, what we are saying is that simply by measuring psi t as a function of time, we can get reaction rate as a function of time. Okay. In other words, we are able to plot we are able to plot reaction rate as a function of time okay. and we find that this reaction rate does this over a period of time. This is what we are trying to say and we want to know how the activity of the catalyst changes as the reaction takes place. We pointed out yesterday that we can understand this simply by trying to look at activity of the catalyst which is reaction rate at any time divided by reaction rate at 0 time. We mentioned this yesterday that by, by 0 time what we mean is that some standard state this is some standard state okay, the standard state and therefore, we can understand the activity with respect to the standard state. Therefore, what we are saying is that reaction rate at any time is some activity multiplied by a standard state. Therefore, we can say if this standard state this is some function of concentration multiplied by an activity. Okay. So, essentially what we need from our experiments from our experiments is that we need reaction rate we need reaction rate as a function of time I will put a minus sign here even here also I will put a minus sign because our reaction may be a going to products therefore, we expect that okay, I will put a minus a here. Okay. So, we will find that this decreases and therefore, if you want to find activity at any point, if you want to add activity at any point, how do you find activity? You simply find reaction rate at this point, which is the reaction rate at 0 time. Therefore, reaction rate at, at any time divided by reaction rate at 0 time gives you the activity. Or in other words, our experiments can give you activity as a function of time. Or in other words, from this data, we can generate what is called as A versus time, which shows this kind of data. So, this is the kind of data we can generate uh, from our experiments. We pointed out yesterday how to uh, uh, collect this data from uh, the equipment like a CSTR and so on, but for the moment uh, we know how to do it. So, all we have got now is that activity is a function of time. Now, what is required for us is to be able to find a function R d which tells us what is the rate at which the deactivation occurs. So, it is some a to the power of m some function of so, I will say c to the power of n some concentration a to the power of n concentration b to the power of some uh, p and so on. Or in other words, just like we are talking about reaction rate function, I will put reaction rate similarly we can talk about deactivation rate function. Therefore, all these are parameters k d m n p are all parameters okay, which we can determine by this kind of data which comes from the experiments. Or in other words, we can generate this data a versus time of under different kinds of conditions at different temperatures at different compositions and so on. Therefore, we can generate this function. So, this we have said already. So, what we did point out yesterday and uh, this is something that uh, is of interest to us when we are trying to understand process is that if we have a rate function a rate function a I will put a minus sign here to say that it is some function of time and then some function of of a and then some function of concentration where our R d is some function this is some function a to the power of m c a to the power of n and so on. In other words we have from our experiment the parameters of deactivation models are known therefore, we know we know how activity d a d t changes as time changes. And therefore, we know from this data we know how A changes with time. Now, frequently our concern is that 
we want to run a process let us say we have a process and then we want to run this process feed coming in and going out this process should run so that the composition at the exit does not change much with time because that is useful because all the downstream equipment would have been designed for certain capacities and if this composition keeps changing with time then there are problems with downstream equipment. So, in other words that means you do not want this function f c to change much during your process which will run for several months several years sometimes. Okay. What I want to draw your attention is an interesting result that you and I will see when we go to a process plant. Let me just draw this and then perhaps uh, you know explain to you I mean, something that you all know it is not that it is new to you, but I want to draw attention to some results which would be very useful for all of us. Okay. So, let me write here uh, catalyst temperature V naught uh, composition percent A at reactor exit. Okay. So, you have fresh catalyst fresh temperature is 450 K this is Kelvin so, 0.39 liters per second this liters per second composition is point is, is 25 percent okay. and spent catalyst spent catalyst temperature is 477 is 0.38. Okay and the composition is 32.2 regenerated catalyst temperature is 450 0 0.28 and 19 percent. So, uh, what I have what I have got uh, here is is the behavior of a reactor uh, separator it is behavior of a reactor in which there is a deactivating catalyst and the composition at reactor exit that is at position 2 is given here. Notice here that when you run the reactor at 450 K okay, V 0 V 0 coming in at 0.39 liters per second we were getting 25 percent at position 2 that is when the uh, catalyst was fresh. Now, when the, the, the reactor is operating for months and months we find that catalyst is deactivating. So, in order to annul the effect of deactivation what the operators have done is to increase the temperature to 477. They have increased the temperature to 477 and you can see that they have adjusted the V 0 what was 0 0.39 they have reduced it to 0 0.38 okay. and in spite of that the composition at, at exit is 32.2 which what was 25 that means the conversion was 75 percent here that has become much less uh, even though the temperature is increased the flow has come down and the compositions have also come down. So, what do we conclude from here we, what we can conclude from here is that but in to arrest the effect of catalyst deactivation uh, the, the operator has increased the temperature. Okay. But in spite of that this performance is not very satisfactory you know in the sense that the catalyst deactivation is quite large as you can see here. So, I mean there is an alternative process that the operator is looking at is that there is a regenerated catalyst whose performance is like this which says at 450 uh, the, the flow rate is 0 0.28 and then uh, the composition at reactor is this is 19, 19 means what it is 25 this is 25 let me write it properly here this is 25 percent 19 means what we are getting 81 percent conversion here. So, we might like to see I mean in fact our major interest would be in reaction engineering and evaluating performance of process and so on to see how the performance of a fresh catalyst performance of a spent catalyst performance of a regenerate catalyst compare on some common basis okay. and what could be a common basis for a catalyst the activity of the catalyst. In fact, therefore, when we look at problems like this we need to be able to look at what is the catalyst activity I mean something that we would like to calculate for which of course, we will set out procedures. Okay. Okay. This is the kind of problem that we are trying to understand trying to solve and for which we want to set up procedures. Okay. So, what is the procedure I mean we have said this before, but uh, you know so we have this reaction A going to let us say B. Okay. Now, we said under quasi steady state approximation 
our equations look like this if the experiments were done in a stirred tank they look like this equal to 0 under quasi steady state approximation. So, that our reaction rate uh, will look like this okay. and therefore, therefore uh, we are able to you know conduct this kind of experiments we are able to conduct this kind of experiments and find out how the reaction rate changes with time okay. that that is something we already said. Having said that having said that what we have we also said is the activity of the catalyst which is given like this at, at 0 time or standard standard state standard state okay, can be found out. Okay. In other words what we are saying is that the, uh, the rate at which the catalyst is uh, uh, reaction rate rate of uh, rate of chemical reaction any time is R a at t R a at 0 or we can also say it as some function of temperature, some function of concentration and as some function of activity or in other words the rate at which chemical reaction occurs depends upon temperature, depends upon activity, depends upon the compositions to which the catalyst is exposed. And we also said that we will be able to determine the, the deactivation function uh, by doing the deactivation kind of experiments which we already talked about which we already talked about okay so that we know what are these parameters because this kd we said this kd equal to minus of da dt equal to rd equal to kd times a to the power of m c a to the power of n c b to the power of p where kd is your deactivation uh, velocity constant which comes from okay so we have we have the parameters of the deactivation velocity which is kd ed am m n and p and so on so all these are known therefore rd is known therefore a at any time is known and therefore therefore we know what is the reaction rate because reaction velocity constant this is something that is known from our uh, reaction kinetic experiments at using standard state and so on. Therefore, k t is known a function is known f function is known because it comes from our reaction kinetic experiment. Therefore, our reaction rate at any time is known fully. Okay. The point I was trying to put across to you point I was trying to put across to you is that here is an instance here is an instance of a catalyst which is deactivated and the operators have tried to annul, annul this effect by changing this temperature and in spite of that it has not been satisfactory or in other words what we find is that the composition at position 2 the composition at position 2 it is changing because the composition at position 2 is changing it is not, uh, not as per design therefore what is coming out as product at position 3 is also not as per your design and therefore this separator is not being used to the capacity that you would have liked to use it to. In other words, you are you are having a suboptimal kind of performance. Now, what is it that you and I can do to see that this problem can be overcome? Now, the our friends in uh, catalyst deactivation have a nice suggestion. What is that suggestion? The suggestion is that if you look at this function, if you look at this function R a at any time t which is a as a function of time and, and there is k which is a function of temperature f c which is a function of composition. Now, what is it that you are this reactor this reactor why, why does this change compositions here change the composition here changes because this activity keeps decreasing. How does this activity decrease we said this activity decreases as per this uh, deactivation rate function. Okay. And, and the parameters of this deactivation rate functions are E d k d 0 m n p where R d is equal to k d times a to the power of m c a to the power of n c b to the power of p and so on. Okay. Now, all these are known. Now, the question is that if I want to keep this concentration here the same at all times, okay, how do I achieve that? 
which means I want this function f c here not to change. Now, to ensure that what I do is that if I can keep this product constant, then what I am seeing here is that whatever is the reaction rate at 0 time, I will see that reaction rate at all times. So, the strategy for managing catalyst deactivation in a process is essentially to see that the product of this reaction velocity and this activity is held constant. Okay. Now, if we of course, something that we all know we have done uh, in our uh, reaction kinetic experiments how the reaction the rate constant k this rate constant k uh, which is similar to say some k 0 exponential of minus of e by r t. This is how the rate constant will change with temperature our k d which is changing like this exponential of minus of e d by r t okay. where and this a uh, this activity a itself is changing with time. Suppose I say that it is an exponential decay, then I say that it is exponential of minus of k d of t because it is an exponential decay. Therefore, our rate function r a which is a function which is k t a t and some function of c you find that this changes and the, the temperature dependence of this is given by this the temperature dependence of this is taken care through this expression. Okay. Therefore, as a result of this you are able to maintain r at any time same as r at 0 time by simply increasing the temperature t you increase t you increase t that means with time you increase temperature and the idea of increasing temperature is that the reaction velocity will go up and uh, the uh, deactivation velocity constant also goes up, but experience says that the increase in deactivation velocity constant is not as large as increase in the reaction velocity that is the experience of reaction velocity constants in the in the process and as a result it is possible to find temperature time uh, trajectory that will give you constant value of this function this product and therefore, in process industry we try and maintain such the uh, reaction velocity to remain reasonably constant by ensuring that this product is held constant this is the strategy. Now, under this strategy under this strategy if you now look at this data if you look at this data what does this data say this data says that when we conducted the experiment at 477 uh, spent catalyst which is getting deactivated we find that uh, even at 477 it is giving uh, uh, at a velocity uh, at a volumetric flow 0 0.3 at only 32.2 showing that the spent catalyst has uh, not been performing as well and therefore, we should have gone to a higher temperature uh, to a higher temperature. So, that you would have gotten results similar to uh, what you expect with fresh catalyst. Now, the point is that this kind of uh, um, uh, variations of temperature on a catalyst may not always be possible in an industry. The reasons are many most important reason could be there could be some specification on the catalyst which will tell us that uh, you know temperatures more than this is not permissible and therefore, this particular catalyst is, uh, is sort of done its work and done its life either it should be regenerated or discarded this kind of answers may be there in process industry, but what we are trying to say here is that there is a strategy to manage this okay. and, and to the extent that you know your catalyst permits you to change temperature in that uh, direction to that level and so on you will be able to handle this deactivation if it is not possible you will have to stop and then use uh, uh, a fresh catalyst I mean uh, discard the old and get a fresh catalyst or look at a regeneration process which might give you a regenerated catalyst of reasonably good activity. As you can see here that uh, the regenerated catalyst at 450 is able to give you 81 percent conversion or 19 percent at the exit here, but it is able to process less you see it is able to process less or in other words what we are trying to say here is that in when you have a deactivating catalyst you have to contend with the fact that you know the, the, the downstream equipment. Uh, may have to be utilized at a, a capacity lower than what you may have designed for or alternatively you may have to factor this in in your design. So, that some of these problems can be adequately taken care in your design and in your operation. So, we want to illustrate this through an example 
we started last time, but you know we did not get far enough. I thought uh, you know we should sort of look at this very uh, effectively, because it is an important example from the process industry point of view. So, here is an example of a process. This is the process. Okay. This is the PFR, this is the separator. Okay. And now uh, we have this is position 0, position 1, 2, let us say it is 3 and 4. Okay. All right. And uh, your feed coming in V naught okay. and then pure this is pure product pure B. Let us say the reaction taking place A going to B and B going to A. The data given is as follows rate constant K is uh, exponential 8.8 5000 by T which is in Kelvin okay. and then deactivation velocity constant is exponential 1.3 minus 2500 divided by T which is function of K and then you have the equilibrium constant K which is exponential minus 19.5 plus 10000 divided by T which is also in Kelvin. This, this whole exercise, uh, the, the context to this whole exercise is as follows. There are instances in which you will be running a process where this catalyst which is inside this PFR is used to produce this product B. Because this catalyst deactivates, you would have to take care of this catalyst periodically to see that you get the product at the capacity rates that you have designed for. So, in this exercise, in this exercise, what has been said by the manufacturer is the following. He says that this reaction A goes to B, let me just write down the data, I will come back to you in a minute. Huh? Catalyst, temperature, feed and A at reactor exit percent this is liters per second F A 0, okay. this is T in sorry, T in Kelvin. So, it is fresh catalyst, spent catalyst, regenerated catalyst. Okay. It says 450.39, 25%, 477.38, 32.2%, 450.28, 19%. Now, what is being said is the following that here is a process which has been running when it runs with fresh catalyst, when it runs with spent catalyst, when it runs with regenerated catalyst. Data is given for three situations. Three situations when you run this with fresh catalyst, process runs at 450 C and then F A 0, F A 0 means feed at position 0 uh, turns out to be 0.39 liters per second and the exit composition of A is 25 percent. You understand what is it says when you run this process at using PFR okay, V naught is uh, given as 0 0.39 liters per second and then the composition at reactor exit which is at position 2 is 0 0.25 percent. Now, when the catalyst gets spent in the sense after a few months or few I do not know how long let us say a few months then it is found the catalyst is uh, sort of its activity has become low. At that time what is observed is that at 477 C at 477 C the composition the composition here is 32.2 here and then uh, flow is 0 0.38. Now, what is being said is that when you run a process let us come back to this. When you run a process with a deactivating catalyst, we said just now that you have to increase temperature with respect to time, so that this product remains constant. And in fact, if you look at this data here, what they have said is that they started the process at 450, but continue to increase the temperature to 477. At that time, when the catalyst has become a little low in activity, the 
compositional A at the exit has increased from 25 to 32. You can see that the catalyst is performing poorly as therefore, we have increased the temperature and so on. Despite this increase in temperature, we are performing poorly because 25 has become 32. Problem statement says is that a spent, this is a spent catalyst that means, this catalyst would have to be discarded. Now, the question is now whether you discard this catalyst and then buy a new catalyst or alternatively in this problem the suggestion is that there is a nice process which is available in the industry by which you can regenerate this catalyst. Okay. And then what has been done here is that the regenerated catalyst has this kind of performance that is at 450 C, but flow is only 0.28 the uh, composition at reactor exit is 19. In other words, what is being said is that we have some data on a catalytic reactor okay. and they ask you to evaluate, they ask you to evaluate whether this regeneration process, this regeneration process is good enough. Huh? Now, how do you judge for whether it is good enough or not? They give a criteria. The criteria is the activity of this regenerated catalyst the activity of the regenerated catalyst should be 90 percent of the activity of fresh catalyst or it should be 2.25 times the activity of the spent catalyst. Okay. Let me repeat what is being said in this problem statement is this we will accept the regeneration process if the activity of the regenerated catalyst is 90 percent of the activity of fresh catalyst or alternatively it is 2.25 times the activity of spent catalyst. In that case only we will accept the regeneration process. So, what is being asked of you is we will have to evaluate the data given to see whether the regeneration process is satisfactory with respect to the two criteria that is specified. So, what in essence is expected of us is to be able to set up the equations and find out what is the activity of the catalyst and so the, we have to find the activity of spent catalyst, activity of regenerated catalyst with respect to activity of fresh catalyst and then see how the regeneration process is performing with respect to the criteria that is specified. So, this is the exercise that we want to do and let us go through this exercise. Okay. So, it is not very difficult, but you know some of these things once uh, some procedures are required. So, I am just trying to do that. I did do that to some extent last time, but I was not satisfied. So, I am just doing it again. Okay. So, it does not mean that what I have done last time is not satisfactory, but you know I am just sort of doing it again, so that I am satisfied with the procedure I have done 0 1 sorry 0 1 2 3 and 4. Okay the problem statement says that this PFR with a catalyst and then it goes to a separator okay. and the separator is able to recover pure B. Okay. So, here what we have pure A okay, pure A and then it requires pure therefore, what comes here is pure A. Okay. This is so, let us sort of go through this whole exercise. So, what uh, 1 by 1 what is F A 1? F A 1 equal to F A 0 plus F A 2. Okay. This is F A 1 equal to F A 0 plus F A 4 sorry F A 4. Okay. We know this. Now, let us say that F A 2 equal to F A 1 multiplied by 1 minus of y 2 where y 2 is conversion at position 2 uh, with respect to with respect to to F A 1 at position 1. What are we saying? See in order to define conversion we have said this before we have said this many times before that we need a reference. Conversions are always with respect to a reference. What is the reference that we have taken? We have taken position Position with respect to position 1 that is F A 1 at position 1. Position 1 is our reference. Okay. So, we can define conversion with respect to position 1 that is what we have done. Okay. All right. So, in that case now that we know this I can substitute it here therefore, F A 1 
equal to f a 0 plus f a 1 times 1 minus of y 2. Why is that? Whatever is a here will be the a here because all the b's recovered in this process. So, therefore, I have written f a 2 see this is f a 2 is uh, f a 1 this is also equal to f a 4 we know this. Okay. Therefore, I have written this. So, this implies what? This implies f a 1 is equal to f a 0 by y 2 is it correct? Okay. It comes directly from here therefore, it implies f a 1 is f a 0 by y 2. We know that c a 4 is c a 0 we agree with this y is c a 4 equal to c a 0 y is c a 4 equal to c a 0. The reason is that at 2 we have both a and b and reacted a and react and then you are recovering completely the b here therefore, here it should be pure a therefore, the composition c a 4 here should be equal to c a 0 that is what I am saying c a 4 should be equal to pure a equal to c a 0. Okay. So, c a 0 c a therefore, comp c a 1 is equal to c a 0 that is point I am trying to make. So, implies implies c a 1 equal to c a 0. I hope this is clear to all of you that because if c a 4 is c a 0 and then what is coming in is, is c a 0 pure a therefore, at position 1 the concentration is c a 0 okay. that is it's common sense. So, let us see what else we can do. What is v 4 by our definition is f a 4 divided by c a 4 correct. f a 4 we said is f a f a 2 by c a 4 this we have said that book this is equal to f a 2 is what f a 1 times 1 minus of y 2 divided by c a 4 which is c a 0. So, that is equal to f a 1 is what f a 0 by y 2 okay. c a 0 into 1 minus of y 2. So, that is equal to v 0 by y 2 into 1 minus of y 2 is it all right. What we are saying what we are saying is that the flow at position 4 flow at position 4 what is the flow at position 4 by definition it is f a 4 by c a 4. Okay. Now, f c a 4 is c a I mean c a 4 is c a 0 we have already proved that saying because b is completely recovered therefore, this must be c a 0. Okay. Then we said that f a 2 f a 2 is what f a 2 is component a at position 2 by definition f a 2 is f a 1 times 1 minus y 2 by definition. So, that is what has been put in here. Okay. Now, what is v 1? v 1 is v 0 plus v 4 that is v 0 plus v 0 y 2 multiplied by 1 minus of y 2 which is equal to v 0 by y 2. So, what we have done? We have found out that f a 1 equal to f a 0 by y 2 hmm? already we have proved that similarly v 1 is v 0 by y 2. So, we have got some information about what are the flow rates at position 1, what are the compositions in position 1. Therefore, we are now in a position to write the reactor design equation for P f r. So, that we can understand what is happening in this P f r and address all the questions that has been raised by the uh, by the problem. Let us do one by one let us address this one by one. So, what we want to do now is we want to write the design equation for P f r and then understand and then use that data to be able to give a proper explanation for the data. So, this is what we are trying to do. So, what we are trying to do is that we will write the design equation for P f r and we are making use of this relationship that we already established and then look at the data to see how we can explain what is going on. Let us see how to do this. So, design equation equation for P f r. What is the design equation for P f r? We have done this many times. So, I say that it is d f a by d v equal to r a. This is a well known design equation that we have written for a long time. Now, we know that C a 1 equal to C a 0. Okay. What is C a 2? By definition is F a 2 by V 2. Okay. What is F a 2? It is F a 1 multiplied by 1 minus of Y 2 and what is V 2? We said is V 1. Okay. V 2 is V 1 because there is no volume change that is V 1 is equal to F a 1 into 1 minus of Y 2. V 1 is what V 0 correct 
divided by y 2 I put it on this. what is f a 1 f a 1 is f a 0 divided by y 2 v 0 into 1 minus of y 2 into y 2. Therefore, if this becomes C a 0 times 1 minus of y 2 is that clear. So, what we have is that C a 1 C a 2 equal to C a 0 1 minus of y 2. Similarly, C b 2 equal to C a 0 into y 2 similarly. Okay. Is that clear what we are saying? This is this is coming from basic stoichiometry. So, this, we are not saying anything new here. So, we just calculated what is concentration at position 2 which is C a 0 1 minus of y 2 concentration of B at position 2 C a 0 1 minus y. So, this is at the exit uh, from the uh, PFR. Therefore, if I ask you what is C a 2 what is C a at any position inside reactor? What is any position inside reactor? Then we will say it is C a 0 into 1 minus of y. So, y goes from y goes from 0 here to y 2 here. Okay. Is that clear? Similarly, what is C b at any position? We say it is equal to C a 0 times y, where y is a variable that goes from 0 at this point to y 2 at the end okay. and y is defined as conversion with respect to position 1. So, so, if I want to substitute, so if I want to take R a, so now the rest is fairly straightforward, you know, we have done this many, many times before. So, this is not new. Let us go through this. D f a d v equal to R a. What is R a? R a by definition is k 2 times C b minus of k 1 times C a, where C a and C b are concentrations in the concentrations in the equipment. All right. Now, we can put we know that F a by definition is F a 1 times 1 minus of y, y is the conversion at any position in the reaction equipment and that y is defined with respect to position 1. Okay. So, y is the conversion in the in our nomenclature, but this time conversion is defined with respect to position 1 that is the only difference. Okay. All right. Now, let us put all these things here. So, the left hand side becomes F a 1 times d y 1 by d v okay, equal to the right hand side is k 2 times c a 0 times y minus of k 1 times c a 0 times 1 minus of y. Okay. Is this all right? Okay. Now, what is F a 1 by definition F a 0 by y 2 d y 1 d y so not y 1 d y d y d y sorry d v equal to k 1 c a 0 1 minus of y minus k 2 c a 0 y. Okay. Now, we can cancel off the c a 0 which will give you v 0 d y d v y 2 equal to k 1 1 minus of y k 2 y. Okay. Now, what we, what, what we have done? What we have done is that in order to be able to explain this data, see we have to explain this data and using the data calculate what is the activity of the catalyst here and here, so that we can judge whether the appropriately the, uh, the criteria is satisfied or not. So, to be able to do that we will have to use this process data for which we need to do a process analysis. We have done the process analysis and based on that process analysis, we find that the differential equation that governs the performance of this reactor is given by this. This is the differential equation which governs the performance of this reactor. Now, once you know this differential equation performance equations to an equipment, the rest is very straightforward. Let us integrate this, let us integrate this and then. Uh, so, when we integrate this, please notice here that this k 1 this k 1 that is important here this k 1 I will put a bracket here just to indicate that these are reactions 1 and 2. So, these are reactions A going to B is reaction 1 is reaction 2 okay. and this is not to be confused with positions this is not to be confused with positions 1, 2, 3 etcetera in the equipment okay. that is important one that is why I put a bracket here to say that this is reaction 1 this is reaction 2. Okay. Now, can we integrate this answer is yes. Okay. Let us integrate this 
and then find out what is the integral. So, I have done this integration, it is fairly straightforward. So, I will not show you the details now. There is one more point that we must bear in mind right here. That is, this representation of this equation, uh, we must take into account the fact that the catalyst that is now being used activity seems to change and it does change depending upon the operating conditions. Therefore, we recognize that there is catalyst activity that we must account for in our uh, in our analysis. So, I am putting that alpha here, so that we take into account the catalyst activity that is so, in other words what we are trying to say here is that if you operate the process as one condition and change the conditions then the catalyst activity would also change because of the conditions have changed. Therefore, I put the catalyst activity of alpha is activity. Okay. I put that effect so that we are in a position to see how that activity is contributing to our process. So, let us quickly write down once again uh, the, difference, the differential equation that governs our process is this. this is y k 2 alpha y. So, we can integrate this. So, I have the integrated form let me integrated form looks like this. Now, uh, you might ask how I have got this integrated form. Now, this is a first order differential equation, it is very simple to integrate, there is nothing new about this. It is alpha multiplied by y, there is no terms like this, it is not there. Okay. Now, beta is k e plus 1 by k e, where k e is equilibrium constant, equilibrium constant. Okay. Now, the most important thing is now try to understand how we can understand the data now that we know the performance equations. Now, what does performance equation tell us? It tells us that k 1 alpha v, what is k 1? Reaction velocity constant, what is alpha? Catalyst activity, what is v? Reactor volume, what is v naught? It is the inlet flow rate, is the inlet flow rate okay? and then uh, what is y 2? y 2 is the uh, mole fraction uh, in, in, in percentage at position 2. Okay. So, in other words we have expressed the performance of the reactor to make good use of the data that we see our data is in this form only you can see here our data is given so nicely our data is temperatures are given flow rate see this is actually it's written F A 0, but it is given in terms of flow V 0. So, we have got V 0 here and similarly we have compositions at the reactor exit which is Y 2 which is given. Okay. What is beta? Beta is the equilibrium constant and we have got data, all the data is also here. We can calculate equilibrium constant in any temperature. In other words, what we are saying is that we have using the fundamentals of the reactor design equations that we have, we have generated a performance equation which is now in a position to tell us how to evaluate the data that is in front of us. Now, it is a question of quickly doing some calculations to find out what is the value of k uh, alpha for the different situations for which data is available in front of us. So, let us do that because that would give us a way of I mean, uh, evaluating whether the our regeneration process is good enough or not. Okay. So, let me let me do that calculation. So, let us do fresh catalyst. What am I doing now? I am trying to find the value of I am trying to find the value of k 1 alpha v for fresh catalyst. Okay. Fresh k 1 alpha v. What is now that is equal to we have said v naught l n 1 minus of beta y 2 okay, divided by y 2 times beta. What is beta? Beta is k e plus 1 divided by k e okay, and fresh catalyst data is given at 450 C. So, we have to do k e at 450, I have calculated k e at 450. So, it is 8.5 plus 1 divided by 8.5. The reason is k e at 450 k uh, equal to 8.5. Uh, 
from data. This comes from data. Okay, given. So beta is known. So let us put all the numbers and then find out. Let me put all the numbers. Please help me. So fresh catalyst continued. Fresh catalyst continued. Fresh catalyst. Catalyst continued. So we have uh, K one alpha uh, V equal to. I have written 0 0.39. Help me, please. 0 0.75 ln 1 minus 1 1.117 multiplied by 0 0.75. Okay, uh, that K1 alpha V equal to 0 0.847. This was fresh catalyst. What have I done? Of course, I have not done the calculations in front of you, but uh, I am sure this is it's, it's really elementary. It's nothing to do with anybody can do this. So, by putting by putting the numbers by putting the numbers for V naught, which is given. Notice here Y two. I have taken Y two as 0.75. Look at the data. Look at the data. Y two is 0.75. Is it correct? I've taken Y two as 0.75. Why is it 0.75? Why is it 0 0.75? It's the way to the way to handle this is. It's, it's a data says the uh, the composition here is 25 percent. Okay, so that means the mole fraction here is 25 percent. Let us just say what is mole fraction. Let us just quickly calculate what is mole fraction. Then you can tell. So mole fraction mole fraction fraction at at position two position two. What is it? F A 1, 1 minus of y 2 divided by F A 1 that is mole fraction of A position 2 of A. This is this is the moles of A coming out total moles F A 1, 1 minus of y 2 plus F A 1 y 2. Okay. That is 1 minus of y 2 is a mole fraction 1 minus of 0 0.25 is 0 0.75. That is how we have substituted the value of y 2. What is given? See, please understand what is given is I have not done it properly. So, this is the, this this whole thing is given as 0 0.25. I hope you understand this. What is given is that mole fraction at position 2 is given as 0 0.25. So, by definition mole fraction is 1 minus of y 2. Therefore, 1 minus of y 2 is 0 0.25. Therefore, y 2 is 0.75. So, what we are saying is that in our process in the data that is given in the data that is given 25 percent means at this position 2 at this position 2 the mole fraction of A is 25 uh, percent means conversion y 2 is 75 percent. Okay, that is why y 2 is taken as 0.75. So, you put all the numbers here you get k 1 alpha v equal to 0.847. Okay. All right, let us go forward. How do you find out? So, the important thing is to find out activity. Activity means we need a reference. We can take 450 data fresh catalyst as reference. Therefore, essentially we must compare with respect to this data. In other words, since we do not know the volume of the equipment it is not given to us. Therefore, and then uh, therefore, the best would be to use this as the reference fresh catalyst and evaluate the other catalyst. Let us do that. So, let us do that for the case of let us look at our uh, spent catalyst. So, some spent catalyst data is given. Let me write it down once again. Spent catalyst, so what is spent catalyst? Spent catalyst data, spent catalyst, here you are, spent catalyst data is here 477.38 and 32.2. Let us do that. So, spent catalyst is spent catalyst data is given at 477k. Okay, and then equilibrium constant, equilibrium constant at at 477k, equilibrium constant. See, I showed you the uh, this one just somewhere here. It is. He said equilibrium constant is described by this equation. Okay, this equation. So you can calculate at 477 what is the equilibrium constant. I have done that. I have done that. So that number turns out to be. So equilibrium constant 477 turns out to be is six. Therefore, beta uh, turns out to be 6 plus 1 divided by 6 
that is equal to 1.16 and now k 1 alpha v at 4 7 7 uh, we have to look at our design equation what is the design equation somewhere I wrote down somewhere equation is v naught beta y 2 ln of 1 minus of beta y 2. Now, I have to substitute for these numbers from this data here from this. So, y 2 is uh, what is the uh, 32.2 means y 2 is 1 minus of 32.2. So, it is 0 0.678. Okay. I will put all the numbers here right now in front of you. So, this uh, you notice here this v naught is 0 0.38. So, I will substitute these. So, it looks like this minus sign is there minus 0 0.38 divided by 1.16 which is beta and then um, what else then you have y 2 0.678 okay ln 1 minus 1.16 and then multiplied by 0.678 so when you do all these calculations k 1 alpha V turns out to be 0.75. Okay, what are we saying? Let me go through this once again. What we are saying is that the data given. Please let us look at the process once again. So when you are employing fresh catalyst, you are running the process at 450. As the catalyst deactivates, you are increasing the temperature slowly over a period of time. And what is this? What is the program of increasing the temperature? We talked about that also we said that we would increase temperature as per this program okay and as per this time time temperature program is given by this equation okay and when you do that and it has become 477 at 477 our data our data says our data says that this is the data and for that data we have done the calculation using the uh, numbers given and it turns out it turns out that our results are something like this the k 1 alpha v at 477 is 477 is 0.75. Now, if I ask you if I ask you now what is the activity of the spent catalyst with respect to the fresh catalyst what will you say you will say that we have done the calculation for fresh catalyst we have done this just now I hope I can find it here it is. Okay. So, so we have we have said this is fresh catalyst correct this is fresh fresh catalyst 0.847 suppose i ask you what is the activity of spent catalyst with respect to uh, the uh, fresh catalyst then fresh catalyst is at 477 for 450 so the activity with respect to fresh catalyst because the standard state is 477 so we should say that k 1 alpha v at 4 7 7 this is 0 0.75 we have we have done this calculation we have done this calculation here. Now, we want it with respect to fresh catalyst what is fresh catalyst k 1 alpha v is 0 0.847. So, it is 0 0.0 divided by k 1 alpha v 4 5 0 this is 0.847. So, this ratio comes out to be 0.88. Is this clear? So, what are we getting out of this? We are getting that k 1 alpha at 477 divided by k 1 alpha at 450 equal to 0.88. Okay. But, what is it that we want? we want activity alpha at 477 in relation to. So, we need to find out so what in other words we, we should activate the spent catalyst at 477 you have to calculate that is important. Okay. So, we will come to that in a minute. What is the activity of spent catalyst? What is the activity of spent catalyst? So, I will write here it's fairly straightforward. So, we will not spend too much time activity of spent catalyst. at 477 k what is it equal to what shall we say hmm? 
based on this what shall we say activity of spent catalyst at 477 divided by activity the, the, what we are asking for is the ratio of alpha at 450 477 to alpha at 450. So, what do you have to do you simply have to multiply 0 0.488 by value of k 1 at 450 and divided by value of k 1 at 477. Okay. So, activity of spent catalyst at 477 is equal to 0 0.88 I will write here it is already calculated. So, it is 0 0.88 multiplied by k 1 at 450 k 450 k divided by k 1 at 4777 k. Now, we can calculate all these things because the data is given. So, I have done all that. So, it turns out that this ratio becomes 0 0.88 divided by 2.6. I have done this calculation this ratio upon that turns out to be 0 0.33. So, what we are saying now is that the activity of spent catalyst at 477 in relation to activity. So, I will write this as alpha at 477 divided by alpha at 450. So, what we have done what we have done is that the activity is calculated with respect to the standard condition which is 450 that is important. Okay. So, this ratio turns out to be 0.33. Now, let us quickly look at let us quickly look at what is the regenerated catalyst. Now, what is our regenerated catalyst k 1 alpha v okay, regenerated that is equal to once again v naught l n 1 minus beta y 2 divided by y 2 beta and we can put all the numbers. So, please our data is in front of us. So, that we can put all the numbers I have done that here. So, it becomes minus of 0.28 okay, and then l n of 1 minus of beta beta value is uh, this is at 450. So, that beta value is known uh, which is 1.117 1.117 and then y 2 y 2 value please note here it is 19. So, 1 minus 0 0.19 is 0 0.81 correct 0 0.81. So, it is 0.81 divided by divided by y 2 is 0 0.81 and then uh, beta is 1.117. So, you calculate this it comes out to be 0 0.727. So, k 1 alpha v regenerated is 0 0.727. This is clear what we are saying. Okay. Now, what we want is what is the activity with respect to fresh catalyst. So, let us calculate what is the activity with respect to fresh catalyst. The activity with respect to fresh catalyst is simply how do you do that. So, you have k 1 alpha v regenerated. Now, this is at 450. So, this is this is actually at 450 data is given at 450. Then we have k 1 alpha v fresh catalyst which is also at 450 fortunately. So, this is 0 0.727 and if you recall we had calculated for the case of uh, uh, fresh catalyst this turned out to be point, point 0.847 sorry point eight four. we had calculated that that is equal to point 0.858. So, what we are saying now is that there are two situations we have considered situation 1 in which we find that the regenerated catalyst this is regenerated catalyst uh, the activity with respect to fresh catalyst is point 0.858. The other uh, situation we have found out is that the regenerated catalyst the spent catalyst this is spent catalyst okay spent catalyst the spent catalyst activity with respect to fresh catalyst this is fresh okay that is 0 0.33 and the data says please let us look at the data it says as long as it is 2.25 times it is 2.25 2.25 times 0 0.33 uh, should be 2.25 times a fresh catalyst. So, what we are saying regenerated catalyst is 0 0.727. If you just multiply by 2.25, you find that it is 2.25. So, let us say 2.25 multiplied by 0 0.33, uh, this comes to approximately uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.71 or so. Okay. So, it is that or in other words this is more 0 0.2727 is more than 2.25 times 0 0.33 showing that 
the regenerated catalyst has activity more than 2.25 times the activity of the region spent catalyst and that criteria is satisfied. So, what we are saying is that the criteria let me just write down what we are saying is the criteria what is the criteria regenerated catalyst catalyst activity should be greater than 2.25 times spent catalyst. So, this activity is 0 0.727 this is 0 0.71. Therefore, sir, this is greater than 0 0.71. So, criteria, criteria in this particular criteria 2 is satisfied. Okay. Now, uh, the point of going through this exercise, let us not forget the, uh, the, the whole thought. The thought is important, the details uh, uh, sometimes is unwieldy and so on. See, in a process, in a process, you will always find situations where the catalyst is deactivating. Okay. And therefore, you will have to change the conditions and those conditions have to be changed as per a program which I pointed out to you. The program is given by this, this is the program which you have done. Okay. Now, but more important in many situations is that you may have to change the catalyst and because there is cost implications here, therefore, there are criteria that you might like to look at. So, what we have done in this exercise, we have set up an equation which describes the process how it performs and uh, we have related the uh, uh, process performance to measurable quantities and therefore, by doing that we are able to evaluate how the decisions that we have taken with respect to spent catalyst, regenerated catalyst and fresh catalyst how they all come together. Thank you.